The finances of the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant have come into focus as many countries wage war against the militant group. Since 2012, ISIL has produced annual reports giving numerical information on its operations, somewhat in the style of corporate reports, seemingly in a bid to encourage potential donors. In 2014, the RAND Corporation analyzed ISIL's funding sources by studying Bharatpur documents, personal letters, expense reports and membership rosters, captured from the Islamic State of Iraq by U.S. forces in Iraq between 2005 and 2010. It found that over this period, outside donations amounted to only 5% of the group's operating budgets, with the rest being raised within Iraq. In the time period studied, cells were required to send up to 20% of the income generated from kidnapping, extortion rackets and other activities to the next level of the group's leadership. Higher-ranking commanders would then redistribute the funds to provincial or local cells which were in difficulties or which needed money to conduct their tax. The records show that the Islamic State of Iraq depended on members from Mosul for cash, which the leadership used to provide additional funds to struggling militants in Diyala, Salahuddin and Baghdad. In mid-2014, the Iraqi National Intelligence Service obtained information from an ISIL operative which revealed that the organization had assets worth US$2 billion, United States, making it the richest jihadist group in the world. About three quarters of this sum is said to be represented by assets seized after the group captured Mosul in June 2014. This includes possibly up to US$429 million United States dollars looted from Mosul's central bank, along with additional millions and a large quantity of gold bullion stolen from a number of other banks in Mosul. However, doubt was later cast on whether ISIL was able to retrieve anywhere near that sum from the central bank, and even on whether the bank robberies had actually occurred. According to a 2015 study by the Financial Action Task Force, ISIL's five primary sources of revenue are as follows. Another 2015 analysis also contends that ISIL's financial strength is in a large part due to fanatical spending discipline. The United States Department of State's Rewards for Justice offers US$5 million United States dollars for information leading to the disruption of the sale and or trade of oil and antiquities by ISIS. Exporting oil extracted from captured oil fields has brought in tens of millions of dollars for the Islamic State. A U.S. Treasury official estimated in 2014 that ISIL earned US$1 million United States dollars a day from the export of oil, much of which was sold illegally in Turkey. The same year, Dubai-based energy analysts put the combined oil revenue from ISIL's Iraqi Syrian production as high as US$3 million United States dollars per day. An accurate estimate of the Islamic State's true revenue from oil is difficult, as black market sales are difficult to trace. In 2014, the majority of the group's funding came from the production and sale of energy. It controlled around 300 oil wells in Iraq alone. At its peak, it operated 350 oil wells in Iraq, but lost 45 to foreign air strikes. It had captured 60% of Syria's total production capacity. Despite controlling large amounts of oil reserves and production facilities, ISIL lacked the resources and technical capacities to effectively utilize them. ISIL earned US$2.5 million United States dollars a day by selling 50,000 to 60,000 barrels of oil daily. Foreign sales relied on a long-standing black market to export via Turkey. Many of the smugglers and corrupt Turkish border guards who helped Saddam Hussein to evade sanctions also helped ISIL to export oil and import cash. In 2015, after the fall of Tikrit, ISIL lost control of three large oil fields. Air strikes by the US-led coalition fighting ISIL and in the wake of the terror attacks in Paris destroyed hundreds of trucks the Islamic State had been using to transport its oil. A study by the Center for Development and Strategy showed this was the preferred method of reducing ISIL's revenue while minimizing total impact. Other energy sales include selling electric power from captured power plants in northern Syria. Some of this electricity was sold back to the Syrian government.
sales of artifacts may be the second largest source of funding for ISIL. More than a third of Iraq's important sites are under ISIL's control. It looted the 9th century BC Grand Palace of the Assyrian king Ashur Nasirpal II at Kalhu. Tablets, manuscripts and cuneiforms were sold, worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Stolen artifacts are smuggled into Turkey and Jordan. Abdul Amir Al Hamdani, an archaeologist from Stony Brook University, has said that ISIL is looting the very roots of humanity, artifacts from the oldest civilizations in the world. It is difficult to accurately measure the revenue from artifacts, as they are primarily sold on the black market, but National Geographic estimates it may be in the tens of millions USD, as well as selling artifacts they.